So let me discuss uh, C square mass logic uh, in this video. So what is C square mass logic is? Uh, it is nothing but a clock to the C mass logic. So if, uh, if I have a n number of input means uh, to implement any logic, uh, it requires 2n plus 2 transistors. So this design is useful uh, for the sequential circuits. Okay. So uh, but it suffers from uh, charge leakage as the uh, output node of this uh, C square mass logic cannot hold the charge for the long time. So its advantage is it is it is insensitive to clock state. So it uh, this logic will help the synchronous data flow through a logic cascade. So uh, let me discuss um, how to implement the two input NOR gate using this C square mass logic. Okay. So uh, this uh, this is uh, similar to that of static uh, uh, C mass logic, but you have a clock and a clock bar is connected. Okay. So whenever the clock uh, uh, whenever the clock uh, is equal to zero, the clock bar value is one. Okay. So these two will conduct. If these two will conduct. It will act as a two input NOR gate uh, based on the value of the input, right? Uh, based on the value of the input A and B. So if uh, A and B value is zero zero means uh, uh, the VDD value will reach the output. Okay. So you will get the one. So if uh, any of the A and B is conducting uh, in the NMOS, okay, if A value is one means. Uh, output goes to zero so it will uh, reaches uh, the low impedance uh, it will reaches the uh, output either as zero or one based on the value of a and b and it will follow the low impedance path okay so this circuit will behave like a static cmos touch okay so what happens when uh, clock is equal to one and uh, clock is zero so if clock is one and clock is zero means uh, uh, these two was open circuited. Okay, it will be open circuit. So the output is in the high impedance state. That is a floating state. Okay. So whenever the the clock is zero and clock is one, uh, it, uh, it is looking like this. Okay, for this condition. Okay. For you, any what? So you can see how many transistors are there. I have uh, three, six, okay, six transistors. So how many inputs are there? I have two inputs, okay. So you substitute in the formula 2n plus 2, you will get six transistors to implement this logic. So next, uh, let me go for the C square mass registers, okay. So I am going to... Uh, implement a positive edge trigger register. So since it is a positive edge trigger register, I have to give clock bar for M3 and um, a clock for M7. Okay. So this logic is based on the master slave approach and uh, we are going to see how it is insensitive to the clock overlap. Okay. So what happens when uh, clock is zero or clock is zero and the clock is one? When the clock is 0 and clock is 1, M4 and M3 will conduct, right? So clock is 0 and clock is 1 means uh, it will start to conduct, okay? So it will... <coughs> so it will conduct means, uh, you can see... Uh, so this will be short circuited, right? So you can see this, uh, this is nothing but an inverter, right? So what will be the value of x? x is equal to d bar, okay? And uh, what happens to, uh, since the uh, clock value is 0, clock value is 0, this is open circuited, right? So this two uh, test is open circuited, okay? So it will look like this. I can't so the output of Q is uh, in the high impedance state. Okay. So this X will not reach the Q. So initially you can see this will act as a master. 
are uh, transparent and this is so uh, opaque okay okay so this is nothing but the uh, master and slave approach so one is conducting another one is uh, not it will not conduct so this will uh, whenever it is conducting it is called as master and another one is called as slave so during this time x will be uh, is nothing but d bar okay so if f, uh, if uh, okay so next condition uh if the clock is next condition is uh, clock is 1 and clock bar is 0 so if clock is 1 and clock bar is 0 means uh, for the next condition so this will be open circuit right so this will be open circuited and uh, this will it conduct so now this is act as a slave okay so this will act as a slave okay and this will act as a most so uh, my x x value will reach the q okay so the x value will reach the q so what is x value x is nothing but t bar sorry uh, x bar value will reach so because uh, the x is uh, inverted right so x will uh, get inverted so my d will reach the a Q. Okay. So uh, we will discuss uh, what will happen if there is a zero zero overlap. Okay. So you can see um, uh, this is my clock and this is a clock bar, and uh, due to some uh, noise or uh, environmental condition, uh, this uh, this clock bar get delayed. So due to that delay, uh, there will be a zero zero overlap. So you can see the clock and the clock bar value uh, goes to zero. Okay, so that is called as zero zero overlap. If there is a zero zero overlap, what will happen? If there is a zero zero overlap, uh, uh, you can see uh, this N mass will be open circuited because uh, I have given uh, this one as clock bar, right? So initially it is a uh, uh, clock bar here. So this. Uh, uh, the N mass will be off, right? For um, N mass will be on only when uh, the input is one. So the N mass will be open circuited. Okay. So uh, so this is the case, and uh, the uh, since the clock value is zero, zero, the P mass will be conducting. Okay. So the P mass will be conducting. So I'm going to short circuit this one. Okay. Okay, it is conducting. So there is a possibility that uh, uh, D value may, may be 1 or D value may be 0. Okay, so if uh, D value is 0 means, if D, D value is 0 means uh, what will happen? Uh, this M1 transistor will not work, right? So if uh, D value is 1 means, if D value is 1 means both the transistor will not be conducting. Okay, the D value is one means uh, uh, the P mass will not conduct since there is no path to, for the input to reach the output. So we should not consider this uh, green line. Okay. So let me assume uh, uh, the input is changing from one to zero. Okay. So that is uh, input is zero. So if the input is zero means uh, the output will goes to one, right? the x value will go to 1 this because this p mass is conducting so if the p mass is conducting means uh, the vdd will reach the x value so it is going to 1 okay since uh, the d value x value is 1 now okay so it will not turn on it will t it will not turn on this uh, m6 transistor okay the x is equal to 1 it will not turn on m6 okay so it will turn on only uh, 
um, M5, but uh, the output will be remain in the high imprint state. So the D will not reach. D will not reach. No, you get it. Get you it. No. Q, right? So what happens if after um, after this T zero zero lap, after this T zero zero lap, uh, uh, the clock bar values one. Okay. Uh, clock bar values one, and uh, clock is zero. Okay. So after this, um, after T zero zero lap. Okay. Uh, clock bar values one. Clock bar values one, and the clock values zero. Okay. So. Uh, So initially it was uh, like this only. Okay. So can I see? So this is my clock and this is my clock part. So the so okay. So in order to reach the clock bar value must be zero. Okay. The clock bar must value must be zero. But here you can see. The clock bar value is one. So even after the T zero zero lap, clock bar value is one and uh, uh, clock uh, is zero. Uh, it will not turn on this uh, the transistor. Okay, uh, this part. Okay. So it will be uh, insensitive to the. So the D will not reach uh, the Q even after the T zero zero lap. So let us come to. So it will completely avoid the race condition. Okay. So uh, the race condition is avoided. So let us uh, go for the uh, T11 overlap. So if you see the clock and clock bar, so for the um, for the um, a minute of time uh, for the uh, this clock and clock. Uh, clock and uh, uh, clock bar is one one. Okay, for this time. Okay, for this time. Okay. So let us see what will happen. So if uh, clock and clock bar values one means only n mass will be conducting, n mass will be conducting, and p mass is over circuited. Okay. So uh, so if I give the value of uh, d as zero, if I give the value of d as zero, the d will not reach the x. Okay, so I should completely remove this this part because d is zero uh, during this uh, during this time uh, t zero zero overlap. So I have to consider only d as uh, d is changing from zero to one. Okay. So if D is changing from zero to one. Uh, this uh, M one and M three, M one and M three, is conducting, right? Conducting. It will cause the my X to go to zero, right? So the X will be uh, go to zero. So the, so that is what I have represented here. So after a few times, uh, after a few seconds, uh, it will go to zero. Okay, X is going to zero. So you can see um, if since the x value is going to zero, this will conduct uh, uh, the M6 transistor. Okay, so it will conduct uh, uh, M6. It will turn on the M6 transistor. Okay, so you can see uh, initially there will be a um, uh, clock bar here. Okay, so after uh, after this uh, T11 overlap, okay, uh, what will be the value of clock bar and uh, uh, clock? The clock bar value is 0 and uh, clock is 1. 
if, if, if the clock bar values uh, you know, zero means uh, it will turn on the stands. Okay, it will turn on the stand sister. So my output will goes to one. Okay, so the my my output will go to one. So this will cause us a race problem. So in order to avoid this race problem, so you have to uh, you have to uh, set the constraint as t hold time must be greater than t one one overlap. Okay, and um, uh, to make the uh, circuit to operate properly, so it seems um, um, there may be possibility that uh, uh, the push pull down and push uh, pull up uh, uh, transistor may turn on uh, for a few times, uh, for a few seconds. Um, there will be a, a path between the VDD and the ground. So uh, to avoid this condition, we have to ensure that uh, the race time and fall time must be approximately uh, smaller than the 5 times the propagation delay of the resistor. 